when you pop open the schedule. And I would first thing I would look for is to make sure that you're at the right month right here and the right year right there. If you want to schedule a different month, here they're all listed right here along the top. For example, if you wanted to go to July, you just click July and boom, it changes right down here. Um, I'm not going to 2024 right now, which would be right here because uh, there's nothing really scheduled there, so it's hard for me to demonstrate anything. But so uh, once you're in the right month in the right year uh, and you want to pick a day to take your flight, this is what they look like. Uh, don't be alarmed at all the colors. They don't mean anything. I'll show you how to change colors in a minute, but some of my students like to um, put their appointments with the same color so it's easy for them to pick them out when they look at the schedule, but uh, they don't really mean anything. Um, so you can see we're open from Wednesday through Sunday. We're closed Monday and Tuesday. Um, and uh, it's kind of weird the way the calendar's set up because Sunday's on the far left. Oftentimes people expect Monday to be over here, so don't be fooled um, when you uh, go to pick out a day to fly on. So let's take a look at Wednesday right here, the 28th. You'll see that, uh, uh, actually let me drop down a little bit right here. Let's take the 5th. It says open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Those are normal hours. Um, and then you'll see some students that are booked down here from 11 to 2. We have a Jeff Steiner. We always have lunch 2 to 3. It'll be marked on the calendar. Then Kevin John 3 to 5. And Lee is coming for a ride 5 to 6. So you'll notice that uh, we actually opened at 10. but there's So the 10 to 11 slot is open on this day, even though it doesn't show it as being empty. Uh, so that's one of the things about this schedule is don't look for a blank spot. A spot. You actually have to look for uh, openings between the slots. For example, at the end of this uh, day also, let me go back to full size here. There we go. Uh, there is an opening from 6 to 7, even though it's not shown here. So let's say you wanted to schedule a ride here on the 5th, the day that we've been talking about. You would click the number 5, and then... Here's all the stuff we're just looking at. These are people already scheduled for the day right up in here. And you can then schedule your time down here. So let's say you want the uh, 10 to 11 spot. So you come down here, you're going to enter three pieces of information, the time, your name, and a phone number. So first of all, the time, 10 to, um, 10 to 11. Make sure you get AM, not PM. So boom, there's 10 AM. And now we're going to go for 11 a.m. It should be the other way, of course. There it is right there. So we have 10 to 11. Then you would put your name in here. And it wouldn't hurt to put like the word ride or instruction or something like that or glider rental, as depending on what you're coming to do. Uh, most of you will be just putting the word ride in there. My uh, students are very familiar with this process. And they just oftentimes put their name. They don't put anything next to their name. And then you put your phone number here. That's in case we get weather or we have a mechanical issue, anything that prevents us from uh, carrying out our schedule. Uh, I will call you at this number. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get hold of you the day before. If something happens at the last minute, I jump on my phone and contact everybody because I know most people have a like a one hour drive to come down, whatever. Uh, so that's it. What time you want to fly, you can come in for a ride, and this is where you put your phone number. And uh, allow one hour for each ride, regardless of if it's a 3,000, a 4,000, or 5,000 foot ride. Always book an hour. Um, and this is where uh, the colors come in down here. If you wanted to put a background color or a foreground color, you could do it there. But it's not necessary, obviously. I would just skip it if I were you. So you got your time, your name, your phone number, and click right here, Create Event and you're done. It'll pop up right up in the top. You'll see in a second. There it is. So there's your entry right there. 10 to 11. Uh, and then if you want to see how it looks uh, on the full calendar to make sure everything's correct, you can go in the upper left corner here and push uh, or click rather view calendar. And we'll go down to the fifth and there's your entry right there. Perfect. If for some reason you made a mistake, if you didn't put the phone number down right or if your time uh, showed up funny, you're going to have to shoot me an email and I'll go in and fix it. The way the calendar set up is uh, once you've made an appointment, you can't go back in and edit uh, the appointment. Uh, it's a long story, but basically we don't want people altering other people's entries. Um, and let's see, I guess that's it. And if for some reason, as once you make an appointment, if you discover uh, you get a dentist appointment or you're going to a, a, you know, a game or something like that, just give me as much notice as you can. 
and I'll pull your uh, appointment out of there. There's no penalty. There's no, um, you know, there's there's no worries. Just try to give me as much notice as you can. A few days is usually fine. All right, and I think that pretty much covers it.